<laughs> hey, hey there, my hearties. <laughs> and welcome to today's live stream event. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, well, I don't know. This thing moves, and I move back, and does it move back with me? No. no. Okay, anyway, I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Uh, well, I think it is anyhow. Yeah, yeah, if the audience thinks that. Anyhow, I hope you're all doing well on this day, uh, Monday. Um, what is it? March 23rd? Yeah. And uh, time for the local weather. It's um, it's not a bad sort of day today. It's a little bit humid. I think the humidity's up around about 80 odd percent. And uh, we had some rain again last night. Nothing unusual about that. We seem to be having rain just about every night. Um, following in the footsteps of um, February. February was very wet. Anyhow, um, I think the temperature, hang on, I'll just check my shirt office. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable, 27 degrees C, and I'm not sweating. And um, so that says one thing. Uh, I have got a fan going here, a little oscillating fan that keeps the air moving around. And uh, yeah, but anyhow, um, first off, I'd like to say hello to... Uh, Clarence Langford. Now, he uh, he said thank you for the for the time for the live stream. Perhaps he's gonna gonna um, pop in and have a look as I on here live. And he also commented on my um, my short film uh, Emphysema Man, and was saying what a joy it was to be able to breathe. Um, I got the impression that he had uh, quit smoking himself some time ago. And yes, it, uh, it it is a it is a joy to be able to breathe properly. But uh, unfortunately for me. Um, that's not the case. Um, doesn't matter, you know, it, it was irrelevant. But um, uh, my wife's coming down here now. Now, that, that could be trouble. I don't know. Got to be careful with she who must be obeyed. Um, are you looking for me, dear? I'm doing a live stream at the moment. Did you want something? No, no she didn't want anything. I had to, had to be sure, you know, just in case. Um, all right, yeah, so Alan. Uh, sorry, Clarence. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things. I mean, yeah, we can do all sorts of things in our lives uh, to try and beat the odds. But let's face it, the, the odds are really against us because you just don't know what life has in store for you. We don't. You know, you can decide not to smoke, not to drink. You can decide to exercise and and uh, eat so-called, uh, you know, all the right foods. But uh, there's no guarantees in life. Now you could go to a, a gym and you could do your workout and you could come outside and be run over by by a car or sold by someone or uh, you know you, you, or drive home uh, from your workout and be in a bad accident and kill you know there's no guarantees in life except for death and taxes that's it excuse me i just gotta have a sip of tea geez the mug's nearly empty it's always the way of late Yeah, anyhow, that feels a bit better. Now, um, I had a, uh, a comment on one, one of my YouTube videos. Uh, I uploaded it about oh, 11 months ago. Uh, it was showing and using my Jakarta Model 35 air rifle. And he had a Vic Shooter. He goes under, that's his YouTube channel name. Uh, he was keen for me to do more videos on um, with the air rifles. And I'm happy to say, Vic, uh, he, he's probably not watching, but you never know. Um, the chronograph finally arrived today. Uh, I've taken it out of the um, the box, but I haven't taken it out of the box per se. The box that it came in, uh, like the um, you know the, the box that surrounds the unit. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, when I finish this live stream, uh, unless my wife's got some other plans in mind, I'll open the box, get the chronograph out, familiarise myself with it. I'll set it up in the backyard with a suitable backdrop, and uh, I'll. I'll weigh the pellets on my uh, reloading scales and uh, then I'll be able to check out the velocity of the two, two Jakarta air rifles, the model 35 and 177 and the Jakarta model 25 and caliber 22. And uh, when I go bush, I'll be able to check out my 243 and 3030 30 and a couple of the 22s. Um, because I did say in a past live stream that, you know, um, I'm a very keen hunter and shooter, have been for 50 years. I'm also a very keen inland fisherman. Um, strange though, because I live not more than... Uh, a 5k as the crow flies um 
west of the uh, South Pacific Ocean or the Tasman Sea, as it's called. And, and yet I'm not interested in saltwater fishing. Now, I used to be, going back a long time ago, but these days I like the uh, peace and quiet of the inland rivers. Um, and uh, I've been fishing inland rivers, you know, for decades now, and I'm still after my, uh, my catch of a lifetime, a, a big Murray cod. You know, uh, I don't plan to... Uh, to eat it, I just want to catch it, uh, land it, weigh it and photograph it, and, and then release it. That's what I do in here. When I catch any native fish, I, I tend to release them. Um, because that's the way I am. I, I, I prefer to catch and release. Just take a few photos of them and uh, then, then let them go back to the river. The only fish, of course, I don't uh, release are the much maligned carp. And um, you know, they're everywhere in inland rivers. You know, it wasn't a wonderful idea, I think it was back in 1856, that um, the, the, uh, the farmers who set up um, canals to be able to water their crop decided, because there was a build-up of weeds and what have you, to bring in the European carp and put them in the, uh, in the canals. Well, they never gave me thought that uh, when the floods come and the canals flooded, well, I mean, when the rains came, the big rains came, and they do, uh, that the, uh, the cart would be washed out into the rivers, and that's exactly what happened. And, of course, that was 1856. That's, uh, what's that, 144, 100, nearly 160 years ago. And now the carp are everywhere. I mean, they're just absolutely everywhere. I've been fishing in some of the inland rivers where all you can catch is carp. You, you couldn't catch a native fish if your life depended on it. I mean, I, I, I once went to an area, it was a couple of years ago. Um, uh, it was the uh, Guaida River. And I was camped very close to it, and the banks were friendly. I could walk down the banks of the river, there's no problem whatsoever. And I could just sit there and, and cast a line using worms or prawns. Uh, I tried all sorts of bait, and, and uh, within seconds, I'd hook a carp. Yeah, some were big, some, you know, some were up to uh, 12, 15 kilos. And on light gear, and it's a lot of fun on light gear. I don't mind catching carp at all on light gear. It's a lot of fun. But I could have filled a box trailer in an afternoon. I was catching that many carp. You know, they varied in size. You know, so some were tiddlers, you know, maybe uh, 20 centimetres, but, but some, you know, some were 60 centimetres, some were closer to a metre. And, uh, you know, yeah, that, that, they're parasites. That's what they are. They ruin the inland rivers for the native fish because they stir up the bottom. They're, they're bottom feeders. And, uh, you know, they've you know, really uh, stuffed up our inland rivers. Oh, that... that a lot of the country towns um, uh, have fishing events on a weekend and, and you know, oodles of people go out to them and just catch the, fit, the carp and bring them in and get rid of them. I suppose it helps. And we do have a company here in Australia called Charlie Carp. They go out in the rivers and they uh, put an electric shock uh, through the water it, and then they net the carp and, uh, and the native fish, of course, are, are released and if they happen to get any native fish. And... Uh, then they turn the uh, carp into a uh, fertilizer. It's called Charlie Carp. It's a great idea. And uh, I think we need more people doing it. Uh, I think what we need is for the government to uh, subsidize these folks and to encourage people to do that. Um, because as I said, um, there's just no way in the world, even with these sort of ventures, that we're ever gonna get rid of the carp. I mean, it just, it's just not gonna happen. Because I, I, uh, I, I can tell you firsthand that I've, I've gutted some big carp as a female carp, and they're just being, well, I've read that they can hold up to a million eggs. I wouldn't be surprised at the massive eggs I saw in uh, some of the female carp that I've gutted. And uh, you have to bury them because um, if the birds come along and pick up the eggs on their feet, they can deposit them back in the water, and the uh, and, and fry will come from those fish, and of course the fry become bigger fish and bigger, and then they breed and breed. Yeah, they, they breed like rabbits and flies. It, it's terrible. Right. Now, one thing that uh, I don't like on social media is pornography. Now, I, um, I'm with Google+. Plus. I said, I've got my YouTube channel, and I'm with Google+, Plus, and I'm on Facebook. And yesterday, I make a habit every day of checking my email, checking my YouTube channel, and I get on the Google+, Plus and scroll the main page. Well, yesterday, Sunday, here I am just scrolling away, looking at the post. And suddenly here staring me in the face is this pornographic scene. I mean, this this livid, lucid, 
high definition, five seconds seen on a loop. Well, there's no place for pornography on social media. There's no place for it at all. Look, with YouTube, and, and Google owns YouTube, whenever I upload a video, and it's the same with all uh, videos uploaded, or with all the millions of YouTube channel owners, that when you upload a video, if it doesn't pass YouTube's protocols, they'll let you know when the video has finished uploading. Oh, yeah. I once did a, um, a video for my first self-published novel called Trailer for a Movie Not Yet Made. And I used the um, soundtrack from... Um, oh, what was it? I think it was the... Oh, good dress it. See, my mind goes blank. I think it might have been uh, the day the earth stood still. That's what it was, yes. It was the prelude, the opening sequence of the day the earth stood still, the original movie, which I might add was uh, far better than the uh, remake. Well, you know, a couple of years ago, with Keanu Reeves. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, and, and they picked me up on that, so I couldn't monetize, which is fair enough, wasn't going to monetize in there because I knew YouTube regulations, their rules. But they also told me that it would, that some of the content would not be uh, shown in some countries. Um, Germany is one of the main countries it wouldn't be shown in. And, and uh, Germany, for some reason, I mean, it has enormous um, controls over social media. Um, and it won't show, um, it, it won't allow videos that have got certain content in the country. So, Anyhow, that, that's their laws, that's their regulations, and so be it. But, uh, yeah, so I, for the first time ever, reported a post. And I also wrote a, a blog about it and um, on Google+. Plus, Someone told me they're called micro blogs. <laughs> I, I, I don't really have a blog page. I did start one some time ago, but um, I had poor response, so I just couldn't be bothered with it. So I just micro blog. <laughs> micro blog on Google+. Plus. But uh, I was disgusted. I mean, I've watched a little bit of porn now and then, I, I, you know, just to break the monotony, so to speak. And uh, it does very little for me. Um, if that sort of thing had been around when I was a kid, you know, I'd, I'd have probably uh, ended up going blind, if the same's true, if you know what I mean. But um, now these days, I just have a look at porn now and then as a bit of a diversion. But... Um, there's a time and a place, and the time and place is not on any social media pages. Absolutely not. Now, you know, if someone wants to watch porn, they can get onto the on the Google and they can just type in the pleasure of whatever, just type in triple X movies, and you'll get a whole host of, of different sites. You know, what amazes me is that um, if you do that, you'll see that th this is one of... Uh, so many million or billion sites, whatever. I mean, it's incredible the amount of porn that's out there. But I'm not surprised because, you know, porn's big business. Yeah, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And uh, you know, sex always sells. Sex always has. But it, it doesn't belong on social media. Now, when is Google going to pull their finger out and do something about it? Now, I started, pardon me for sniffing. I started a, um, what you call a petition on Google Plus, uh, where a plus, which is a, which is a like, um, was a, was people's signature. Now I haven't got. I, I think I've maybe I've got one like, or one plus. But that's atypical. You know, people are so apathetic these days about things. I did the same on Facebook last year. I started a dedicated page on Facebook. Uh, a petition against uh, bullying, harassment, and abuse. Bullying, abuse, and harassment. Bar B A H, and uh, where I requested um, fellow Facebookers to give a like to be their signature. And uh, I got a lousy thirty-three likes in about four months, and I boosted posts. Now I said this before on a previous live stream, and I got a lousy thirty-three likes and some other. Um, ban the fur trade, say the fairy animal type of thing, uh, which uses the, a fox as an avatar. A fox. A fox, for goodness sake. And uh, they got something like a quarter of a million or more likes. Which, well, it just both volumes to me. It says, well, it looks like people care more about furry little animals than they do about the safety of their own children. 
I know that's not true, but that's how it seemed to me. Now, that's a bit of a tragedy, isn't it? And it's going on all the time. You know, it's going on all the time. There's nothing new about bullying. You know, I saw it when I went in that primary school. I saw it when I was in high school. Um, fortunately, I was always able to take care of myself. And when someone tried it on me, well, I retaliated and that was the end of it. But unfortunately, with social media, uh, kids these days can be bullied on cyberspace and uh, pictures of them can be posted and uh, so on and so forth. And it's, it, it's a profound tragedy that some young folk are committing suicide because of this bullying. It's just not right. You know, the tight time, I don't know what Facebook can do about it. I don't know what all social media can do about that sort of thing. Um, unless you have like YouTube three strikes and you're out. You know, but you've got to report it. But that comes back to pornography. And I was saying with YouTube, if YouTube can censor videos as soon as they're uploaded and there are millions uploaded every day, and because Google owns YouTube, why can't Google Plus do the same? Why can't Google, and these videos have to be uploaded. I know I've uploaded videos on Google Plus myself. And depending on the length of the video, that it can take quite some time. But, you know, a five-second video, high definition, might, might only take a couple of minutes to upload and process. Why can't they then censor it? If they can do it on YouTube, why can't they do it on Google Plus? I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. And here's another thing I, I, that doesn't make sense to me on Google+. Plus. Why don't they have emoticons? I love emoticons. I love all the little smiley face and all the little the little icons you can get. They're great. Yeah, Facebook's got a whole mess of them. And uh, there is some section on um, somewhere on Google that you can add emoticons, but on Google+, Plus, you can't. But why isn't it there? You know, I, I don't understand it. Anyhow, but it, as I say... I miss my emoticons. I think a lot of people would like emoticons on Google+. And uh, so maybe one day uh, um, they might wake up to themselves, Google, and put it on Google+. <coughs> oh, excuse me. A bit, <coughs> a bit dry in the throat. Yeah. Now, um, I uploaded a video yesterday. It was only a very short video, 20 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes. Dummy. <laughs> Twenty seconds, celebrating a thousand views for my film *Emphysema Man*, my short film. I call it a film, but it's a video. And I suppose it's six, one half a dozen, the other. And uh, I checked it out today, and it has got yes, I've got some notes here. Um, it's up to a thousand eighteen views today. You know, I'm really happy about that. I mean, it, it it's nothing compared to a lot of other YouTube channels, and, and I know I've said this before, but um, you know, some can up upload videos and they've got a big subscriber base of course and they can get a thousand views an hour i mean that would be wonderful but when you've only got 33 subscribers that sort of thing doesn't happen but um for me um maybe it will one day maybe people will, i'll build up my subscriber base if i live long enough maybe i might get to a thousand which is one of my aims <laughs> i don't think i live long enough though but yeah um to get a thousand views i was really ecstatic over that a thousand views in two months because that's never happened with any of my videos and i've uploaded 157. of late a lot of them have been these live streams get automatically uploaded to youtube um i originally thought that i'd uh, i'd have to download them and edit them and upload them but then i found out that they went straight on the google uh, on the youtube so i decided well what the hey i'm not gonna be bothered editing them yeah, so at uh, 1,018 views as of today, and that you know, I thank everyone for viewing that video, because without your support, I wouldn't have 1,018 views, and that's the same with all YouTube channel owners. If if people didn't view their videos, well, they'd have no views. Would they? That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's all. I didn't mean to do that. I left. The I left the, uh, what's the name, the pointer on the damn thing. and Anyhow, yeah. And I also checked um, uh, Crutching Sheep in an Aussie Shearing Shed was my first video to get a 1,000 views. But it's been uh, there for seven months. And at the moment, it's still getting views. It's on 1,045. And uh, another video I uploaded, as I said, my Jakarta Air Rifle, and showing my Model 35 and, and, and one-shot demo, well, that's uh, that's up to 956 views. That's in 11 months. 
And uh, but you know, I, I'm happy with that. Look, I'm only a very small channel. Like I said, I got 33 subscribers, and I'm you know I got about 8,300 lifetime views. Uh, it, it, it's a nothing. But I keep trying because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making videos, and it keeps my mind active. You know, I really am concerned that the way my mind's been drifting north of normal of late, that I might be suffering onset early onset Alzheimer's. Oh, geez, I hope not. I hope not. Because I got a lot of things I want to do. I might suffer from emphysema. I might things, you know, I might find things tough going. But um, there's still a lot of things I want to do, and uh, one of them is to continue with my YouTube channel because I love YouTube. I love it because it's um, it's so diverse. It um, it covers every subject from A to Z. That as far as tutorials go, you can learn anything on YouTube. You know, as I said, I'm uh, I do a bit of welding. I'm not a welder. I'm just someone who welds, and I'm basically self-taught. But if <coughs> oh, <coughs> oh, excuse me, but if I want to, um, if I'm not sure about something, I'll just get onto Google and onto YouTube, and um, I can find out whatever what it is as far as welding goes, or anything else. You know. No matter what it is you want to do, there's tutorials there for everyone. And a lot of my first class tutorials too. Um, I've been thinking about that maybe I should start putting some um, posts or, or um, some links to some of my favorite YouTube channels. I, I subscribe to about 100 YouTube channels. And, uh, you know, there's things from photography, from um, uh, welding and from plasma cutting and um, uh, all, all sorts of things. And uh, I think that maybe time I just started putting some uh, some links there with some of my favorite YouTube channels. I might do that. I told my son about one last night. Uh, I'm a I'm a, not a photographer. I'm just someone who bloody pardon my French. I'm just someone who um, takes pictures. Well, I record video more than I take pictures, but I'm not a photographer. I'm just someone who uses a camera or cameras. But I told my son of a, a very good YouTube channel. I'm going to name it Tony Northrup. Uh, th this guy is awesome. God, this guy really knows his stuff. You know, I'd recommend him to anyone. Tony Northrup, and, and often he's got his wife Chelsea with him as well. Yeah, that he himself, um, he's one real cool dude. He, he can present a 45, 50 minute video, and he rarely ums or ahs. You know, he, everything flows off his tongue, and he's He's absolutely brilliant. I mean, and this guy really knows his stuff. I know there are a lot of people on YouTube who know their stuff, but oh, this guy really impresses me. I'm in awe of the man. I really am. And uh, what he, most of what he talks about to me is gobbledygook. And uh, I, I, I sent a comment to him about that once, and uh, and he replied, and and and, <laughs> and he, he said that because I asked him if all that stuff just came out of his head or he wrote a script, and he said no. He said my, my head's full of it. <laughs> And I did be a comment on a recent video of his and said it was more, more gobbledygook, Tony, but it's interesting gobbledygook nonetheless. And I, you know, I asked him why it was that he, he didn't um and ah and never got tongue-tied. And I said, um, you know, is it because you're young or younger than me at 67? And uh, or, or what is it? And he said, <laughs> he said, thanks, John. He said, I think it's uh, uh, it's beer, beer and bacon. <laughs> beer and bacon was his reply that kept him... Um, kept his mind livid, lucid. Yeah, potassium nitrate or saltpeter, hops and uh, yeast. Yeah, that must be it, I said in the reply. Yeah. Oh, dear. Excuse me, I just have another sip of tea. No, I better have a sip of water instead because there's, there's mostly tea leaves in the mug. And if I, if I swallow a tea leaf, I'll be coughing my head off. You don't want to hear that, do you? No. Oh, well. Um, yeah, I normally got the time down here. Now, for some reason, last night, I, I touched a tab uh, that I obviously shouldn't have touched because it completely changed my Google Play page, main page. Now, normally, I've got, it's got Google up here, and it's got a, a long extended uh, rectangle with the, with the cursor in it, and it's got all my little uh, squares, you know, the, the ones that you click on channels you go to often. Well, the damn thing just went, and then this grey screen came up, and, and and I've lost all the icons down the bottom. Normally here I've got uh, 
um, by um, emails and um, so on and so forth. Now it's been replaced with something that's got Google on it, um, Gmail, a G for, for Google Docs and something else in YouTube. And way over here on the right, it's got time. Well, that's not the way it used to be, and I don't like it this way. So once again, I have to get my uh, a very brilliant uh, elder boy in tonight and say, Derek, can you please fix this up for me? Tell you what, it's handy to have someone who's uh, who knows their way around a computer. You know, I look at what he does, and it just amazes me what he knows. But I suppose that's the advantage of being younger and uh, growing up in the time when uh, computers and whatever, basically, when they're infancy. I mean, uh, computers have been around a long time. You know, they've been around for what uh, fifty years or more. But um, they're Today's computers are uh, so far removed from what they were in the past that it's, you know, it's chalk and cheese. It's way out there. You know, it's like the moon, comparing the moon to the earth. It just, it, that's how much difference there is today. And, and I, get, you know, I get frustrated with it at times. <coughs> I really get frustrated with, um, with modern technology, at times, even though I love it. I love all the gizmos and gadgets. I really do. Look, I've got an iPad here. I bought it, oh, it might have been three or four years ago, and I've really used it. Even bought a book on dummies, how to use the damn thing, and, and I haven't even read the book. <laughs> it takes all my time to remember that the iPad sitting here in my um, uh, laptop case or bag to pull pull out the iPad and charge it. And if there's any new apps, I'm going to take up to the house because I think Wi-Fi is not very good down here. Anyhow, but uh, look. I, th I think I've covered everything here that's on my um, my notes. So look, it's it's one twenty seven. There's no point, to, as I always say, sitting around like a shag on a rock. I'm in an arm and scratching my head. And uh, I, I like these. These are the special effects, the sound effects that you get on uh, on these live streams. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's the doorbell. <laughs> but you would have known that, wouldn't you? Look, I'm going to call it quits because I, I, I haven't got anything else to say. Um, I look away, look back. No, it's gone blank up here. So I will say to anyone who happened to be watching, thank you for watching. And until tomorrow, bye for now. <laughs>